Hello YouTubers, it's Gold Standard 00924 coming at you with another video. Um, I'm going to be continuing my Power Rangers Season Review installment. And the review I'll be doing for Power Rangers today is Power Rangers RPM. Um, this is the 17th season of Power Rangers. And this was also, this going in the series, this was meant to be the final season of Power Rangers ever. And around this time, um, you know, Toon Disney transitioned from that network to Disney XD, as we all know. And during the transition to Disney XD, Power Rangers wasn't picked up. And um, what happened was that um, Power Rangers RPM was going to air on ABC Kids on Saturday mornings, which not a lot of people have, if you think about it. Um, even though ABC is a broadcast cable network, you know, it, you know, a lot of people in the households would have it. Um, there are some places where they don't air Power Rangers RPM. Um, you know, there'll be some places where they'll air them, some places where they don't. Like, you know, I live around the D.C. area, like, actually around Northern Virginia, and they, they don't air any Power Rangers. They never have when uh, Disney bought the series. So they never aired Power Rangers on ABC, on ABC Kids, and um, you know. And the other alternative I had to watch is to you know just uh, look online and watch the episodes on there. And um, and basically, this was around the time you know Power Rangers. I mean, you you get. I mean, it was okay for like people to upload Power Ranger episodes, you know, full episodes. Um, unlike nowadays, since Saban bought the rights back, um, you know, they've been taking down episodes and, you know, the only chance you have to watch them is by Netflix or, you know, buying the DVDs. Um, but, you know, I mean, back, you know, a couple years back in 2009, I mean, it was all right to, like, upload full episodes. But, um, I, and that was pretty much the only way I could watch uh, Power Rangers RPM. Um, what other things? And also some behind the scenes. Um, Bruce Kalish, who was the executive producer from Power Rangers SPD to Jungle Fury, uh, he stepped down as the executive producer and replacing him was Eddie Gazillion, who, um, who served as the head writer of uh, Power Rangers RPM. Um, but basically, you know, Bruce Kalish was kind of focusing more on uh, Aaron Stone, which was a live action adventure program on Disney XD and it was also towards the end of Toon Disney as well but um, he was focusing on that and um, and he let and he stepped down as the executive um, yeah I mean overall I mean Power Rangers RPM um, no this was a to me was a pretty standout season um, you know I really enjoyed it for the most part um, it's not perfect it's not great in the way I mean it's a good season for what it is um, you know, it basically is still 32 episodes, unfortunately, but, uh, they did what they can to kind of, um, they did what, you know, the storylines, you know, working on them and stuff. And to me, it, I mean, despite the lack of, you know, the lack of length and storylines, I mean, I thought they pulled it off really well. Um, now the story in this, uh, is that, um, there's a Vengex virus, there was a computer software virus that was going on that was wrecking havoc along the cities and it got to the point where a lot of pretty much the hu entire human population was turned into a wasteland and there's only in the soul and the survivors of the Vengex attacks would have to migrate over to Corinth which was the only city that was there and there was like this biodome that's kind of protect kind of used as a defense shield to kind of ward off the attacks from Vengex and his minions and um, basically that was the only setting in that in the series series um, and we get to introduce three characters in the season we got to see Scott Flynn and Summer who were the red blue and yellow Rangers respectively um, so you know, going the RPM, I mean, this was, to me, kind of stands out in a way because, you know, unlike most Power Rangers seasons where it's like, you know, they all start off with, like, five Rangers, you know, or a certain number around Rangers that kind of be chosen, 
like right out of the get go, like they're just randomly chosen as Power Rangers. Um, they did it a little quite differently. Um, I guess you could say SPD kind of did it first because you know in SPD they introduced the three Rangers first, and then the other two Rangers uh, an episode or two after, like one on one. But um, kind of like what um, what they did with Jack and Z, where they just you know picked them as Power Rangers in like different episodes. Um, they did some they did some of the same thing with uh, with the two other characters, which are Dylan and Ziggy. Um, they would go on to become the Black and Green Power Rangers. Um, so yeah, I mean they you know they just started off with just a few Rangers and then two other Rangers to kind of make it five in total. Um, yeah, it's. Yeah, you know, to me, Pirates RPM seems kind of more like, uh, I guess you could say its biggest inspiration is driven from the Terminator, the short-lived Terminator series. Um, you know, and just having this whole post-apocalyptic setting, which was something Power Rangers never really did prior to that. Um, but, you know, it kind of led more, probably, you could argue that this, maybe not arguably, but, um, you know, that, you know, that Power Rangers RPM can be like the darkest season for as far as being a Disney Power Ranger era is, is concerned because a lot of the Disney era Power Ranger series tend to be really lighthearted and you know very kid friendly ish and not as violent and complex compared to like most of the Saban seasons um, but for what it was I mean it kind of it kind of you know the pilot episode really to kind of kick it off Power Rangers RPM was really kind of something different, you know, um, you know, you get to see, like, all the other rangers, and, you know, doing their thing, you know, just rescuing kids, and, well, not just kids, but, you know, just rescuing people in general, and, you know, every, you know, all the rangers have, like, some sort of, per you know, have their, um, personal lives that were going on, and all, the and they were kind of running through these emotions prior to becoming power rangers, so I thought that was a kind of neat, neat touch, you know, especially some of the episodes that Eddie Gazillion did, like, um, like the Ranger insert color here, like they'll put like different episode titles and we get to see like how their lives were like before they were Power Rangers. So um, I thought that was pretty cool because I know like a lot of certain primetime shows do that as well, like kind of like Loss also and what Revolution on NBC would end up doing. And... Um, no, but I guess, you know, the only difference with Revolution and Power Rangers RPM is that Revolution kind of emphasized on, you know, like the old times since, you know, the technology that they had, you know, the power outage and that they can't really utilize any technological gadgets. But with RPM, it's totally the opposite, you know, they don't have to rely on old school, um, you know, just doing things manually. Um, so that, that's probably the difference between that show and Revolution. Um, what else I want to be saying? Um, you know, I do think the pilot episode was really well done. And, you know, and, you know, just Dylan, you know, Dylan and Ziggy, you know, the chemistry really clicked. Um, you know, Dylan being like the bad boy of the series, you know, just the stereotypical guy in the black leather and in the motorbike and stuff. But, um, you know, he had a pretty interesting backstory. Um, you know, he was, you know, he had a missing sister who he and, you know, her sister and himself, you know, they were kind of taken under hostage by Vengex and, you know, they both got separated. And, um, and it turns out that Dylan, um, in the pilot episode was injected with the Vengex virus. And, you know, the security takes him in and kind of, they were about to kill him, but then, you know, they kind of made an agreement that, you know, as long as Ziggy is, remains on the harm, that, um, that Dylan could just basically um, not get killed and um, you know basically you know just certain incidents that happen would lead up to Dylan uh, being somewhat of a kind of taken under as a community service in a way um, he would end up becoming the black RPM Power Ranger um, so I mean his backstory I mean I think that's also kind of one of the things that also that I really liked about RPM was um you know, that the Red Ranger doesn't get, like, the backstory in a way where it's, like, really, really deep. It's all about him. 
you know, the Red Ranger gets all the character development and all the cool gadgets, but, um, but, you know, I mean, so, you know, it was kind of a, also a nice change, you know, just having another Ranger color, um, just, you know, just having, you know, some sort of a significant, you know, significant, uh, backstory, like I said, and as well as the character development that goes on, uh, throughout the series. Um, what else? All right, I kind of ran through some of the other Rangers, but you know, I went with Zig, uh, with uh, Dylan, excuse me. Um, I want to also talk about the other Rangers as well, just to kind of go in depth with that. Um, you know, Scott, you know, he was, you know, the air pilot, the air commander. Um, kind of gets looked down, kind of gets looked down upon because. You know his father and um, his older brother were. You know he they always depended on the, each other, and you know his father always had high hopes on his older brother. Unlike uh, Scott, who he feels is kind of neglected, or he just fe really wants to feel like he's important to the team. And um, you know there was like one day where his brother got killed during uh, when they were on the plane, and then like. Uh, and then, like Scott, pretty much, je you know, just um, escaped in time before his older brother died. And, um, and even though you know, it was, you know, he's trying, you know, he and his uh, father don't really get along in the beginning of the series. You know, he, Scott's trying to do what he can to kind of, kind of prove himself. Well, not just prove, um, kind of prove his, not to only to prove his father, but also to prove himself that, you know, that he's you know committed to accomplishing his duty and eventually he becomes the red rpm ranger um now originally um the actor that plays scott eka devo um he said in his interview that uh originally he was gonna he auditioned for dylan who was the black ranger and um but he didn't get the role and instead dan ewing would go on to play uh to play dylan and you know the and then echo would go on to play scott as the Red Ranger in the series. Um, so I thought it was a nice little interesting trivia there. Um, you know, I mean, speaking of interviews, I might post the interview um, down in the description box for those that are interested, or maybe they just you just can't find the interview. So I'll probably post that uh, interview that he did down in the description box, you know, just the URL link. So it's pretty self-explanatory um, if you're interested. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, Scott's character, I mean, he, he was pretty good, you know, I, I like him, but, um, I mean, I'm not like the, you know, the, I don't know, I can't speak today, but, um, you know, I, I thought Scott was a pretty good ranger, but, um, but I think there were a lot of other better Red Rangers, but, you know, he, he, he didn't really piss me off, like, compared to, like, the other rangers, uh, prior to the series, um, so yeah, that's basically Scott. Um, Flynn, you know, he was the Blue Ranger. Um, he's actually, I think he was from Scotland series because they did acknowledge in the series that he, you know he had an accent. You know, he has a Scottish accent. Um, you know, he, you know, he grew up, you know, admire, you know, idolizing superheroes when he was a kid. But you know, and he was kind of, I guess you could say, socially challenged at first. I mean, when they show like the flashbacks and stuff. Um, and, you know, and his father, you know, he just didn't believe in, you know, superheroes. They all, you know, he all thought it was just comic books. It's all just like a, just basically a, a story, you know, just a kind of a storytelling a novel. And, um, you know, he just didn't believe in that whole hero stuff. Um, you know, he was also, you know, they were both like auto mechanics as well. And, you know, and, you know, Flynn was just, you know, wanting to, you know, I guess like Scott to some extent, you know, they wanted to be, you know, feel somewhat important in a way where, you know, they want to rest, you know, they just want to make a difference to their team or, you know, just, you know, just wanting to help out the community in a way. There were times where he helped out the people that were in the bus during the Vengex attacks. Um... You know, and his father was like, you know, just when the vengeance attack was going on, he and his father were leaving. But then instead, uh, Flynn, you, you know, just used the bus to kind of get everyone in for safety. And it turns out that his father, you know, kind of, you know, just uh, he was wrong in a way. And, you know, and 
you know, he and his father, or he and Flynn, his son, um, they managed to patch things and um, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, Flynn, I mean, he was a pretty underappreciated character, um, you know, but I, I thought it was a pretty likable ranger in my opinion. Um, you know, you got Summer, who was the yellow ranger of the series. Um, I don't know, her backstory was really, really odd. It's like she was going through this midlife crisis in a way, even though she was really young, though. But, um, but you know, she was an entirely different character. And, I don't know, it's, like I said, her backstory was just like, I don't know, I had myself scratching my head. Because she started off as this, like, stereotypical, sto snobbish, rich, stuck-up girl. You know, she was getting everything that she wanted, you know. And um, there was like one day, you know, her, you know, uh, her parents, you know, they were pretty overbearing with her. They were very overprotective and, you know, they're always handing her things on a silver platter. Um, and then her friends, quote unquote, abandoned her during the Van Vengex attack when there was all this, when they were escaping and there was, and she couldn't fit, you know, she, um, you know, there was like this, you know, there was a truck that was, you know, that was moving and then you know they couldn't fit everyone in the vehicle so they had to push one of them out and that was summer so she basically had to walk all the way you know with her sandals and you know she realized that her butler you know she found her you know she finds her butler and they were talking um you know it seemed like she was like she didn't really have anyone that you know that to really interact with that truly uh, understood how she felt you know, and that was, you know, she, she always went up to their butler to talk about things. And um, it kind of led to where, um, to a scene where, like, she took off her uh, sandals and, you know, just basically getting all dirty and, you know, and just, you know, her character was starting to change, you know. Um, but, you know, I mean, her backstory, I don't know, I, it just seemed kind of weak compared to the other rangers. Um... But, you know, Summer's backstory was, um, I don't know, it was just kind of, maybe they could have been better in a way, but, um, you know, and eventually, um, you know, it's just kind of weird, weird, and she becomes, like, the adventurous girl, the tomboy type of ranger, you know, and riding motorbikes, I mean, she, and she, she ended up having a crush on Dylan, even, it was, even though it was pretty obvious in the pilot episode, and, um, you know, but, you know, she had the hots for him, but, uh, but Summer was actually pretty hot, <laughs> I mean, no pun intended, but, um, you know, the actress is pretty hot, um, so that's pretty much Summer in a nutshell, um, and then Ziggy, who, um, was the Green Ranger, um, he, originally he wasn't gonna be in there as a Green Ranger, at least storyline-wise, um, you know, they were doing, in the one episode, um, they were doing auditions for who should be the Greed Ranger, and, um, and then one of them ended up becoming Tanaya, who originally was going to try out for being a Green Ranger, but then it turns out that she was actually working for Benjix all along, um, and then, like, Ziggy and Tanaya were, like, fighting over the Green Ranger Morpher, and then they were kind of playing tug-of-war for a moment when, um, when Ziggy activated the Morpher and became the Green Ranger. And the reason why the Rangers kind of ended up making a big deal out of it, and the reason being is because in the series, um, you know, the Ranger Morphers for this season, if anyone activated the Morpher, then they're pretty much bonded with the Morpher for life. So it's, it's pretty, pretty permanent in a way, so it's not like, uh, previous Power Ranger series where like even if you have like some personal issues you have to take care of and you know you can't you feel like it's getting to the point where you can't uh, serve as a Power Ranger normally they would um, they would kind of relieve their duties but um, and just basically strip away out of their powers but um, but with Power Rangers RPM that's not possible in a way because like once once you activate the Morpher once you unlock it then you're basically, it's basically bonded with your DNA for life, at least according to uh, Dr. K in the series. Um, but uh, Ziggy was actually the comic relief in the series, and um, it actually, you know, the comic relief in the series actually, um, actually didn't feel forced in this season. 
Um, unlike certain other comic reliefs like Dax, for instance, that tried too hard, but um, it just wasn't the type of comic relief that was really kind of like have you laughing your ass off. But um, but Ziggy actually um, he talks very clumsily, and um, you know you know he um, I don't know, he was a pretty funny comic relief, I admit. Um, you know, and he and Dylan were, you know, really buddy buds. And, um, there was, like, this cool action scene in the pilot episode where they're, like, it was kind of like one of those cheesy 80s-style action movies where they were, like, uh, driving away. They're attacking the, well, they're kind of, um, yeah, they were basically driving away from the attack bots, which were, I think, the foot soldiers of the season. And, you know, and they were just, you know, it was just, um, pretty cool moment. Um, you know, and, you know, Ziggy was actually pretty cool. Um, man, I mean, I'll say a lot of the Rangers were pretty likable for the most part. Um, and then Ziggy also had his thing with Dr. K. He has a crush with Dr. K. Um, so, I mean, they were kind of hitting it throughout the series, and, um, and they finally did at the end. But, um, you know, I mean, it was pretty cool. You know, it was a pretty cool Ranger. Um... I don't know, he kind of reminded me of that Merton Dingle guy from Big Wolf on Campus. I mean, I'm not sure if you remember that show, but uh, he used to come on uh, Fox Family or what we now know as ABC Family, but uh, he kind of reminds me of that, just minus the goth look. But uh, I always thought the actors looked alike, even though they were ones from Canada and ones in New Zealand. But um, I don't know, it, it just kind of reminds me of him. Um, but, you know, Ziggy was just a pretty good ranger, like I said. Um, so that's basically the five rangers, um, and then as the series progressed, we get to meet up with, uh, Gem and Gemma, who turns out to be the gold and silver rangers, respectively. Um, man, I mean, <laughs> um, Gem and Gemma, man, I mean, uh, I, it just really kind of annoyed me in this season. Um, you know, when they first, you know, when they first, uh, showed up in the series, you know, they were... They were, they were talking really, really annoying, you know, mannerism. But, um, you know, they were always, like, one guy would, like, for instance, Jem would say something, and then Gemma would finish his sentence that, that he didn't complete. And it sounded like they had, like, some sort of ADD problem. But, I mean, it's not to, I'm not trying to offend those people with ADD, because that's, I'm not trying to offend people, like I said. But, you know, at least the, to me, that's kind of where they came off as. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're... They weren't meant to be comic reliefs. I don't think they were, as far as the way they were trying to be portrayed as. But to me, it just kind of seems like they came off as that. But you know, um, but you know, um, damn, I'm losing train of thought here. But Gem and Gemma were uh, Doctor K's best friends, and um, they were part of this uh, alphabet soup. Um, this was basically like a top government organization. It was a top secret one. And they were, you know, they were taking kids under hostage, and they were, you know, just giving them like, like sort of a kind of like their version of homeschooling in a way, where like uh, they were kind of they can't go outside, they can't see the sun and stuff, and um, you know, and they, you know, at first they were believed, they were kind of brainwashed to believe that uh, that the sun actually they're very allergic to the sun, but um, it all turned out to be a lie. And, um, and they were trying to make their escape when, um, when the, I think, uh, Dr. K's parents, you know, basically, um, no, not Dr. K, no, not Dr. K's parents, but the security, um, what happened was that Dr. K was, um, turns out that she injected, uh, injected the software, a virus software known as Vengex, and, um, and she was going to use it to kind of kind of get them out of there and just you know just destroy the institute and then you know basically um when dr k was getting taken away she was going to use the she was going to use a, like a usb stick that would allow a firewall to kind of prevent the vengex virus from spreading and obviously that she failed to do so and then you know because she can insert it the vengex virus ended up spreading not only the instant no not only destroying the the building, but as well as kind of scattering all throughout the world, and um, you know, and it was believed that Gem and Gemma died, 
so, but that wasn't the case. And um, and Gem and Gemma would end up becoming the Gold and Silver Rangers. Um, you know, I mean that was, I mean Gem and Gemma were kind of were my least favorite of the series, and um, but it was pretty cool just to see Gold and Silver Rangers like in the same series. You know, I mean other series they'll have like Gold Ranger in one series and the Silver Ranger in another series, but you know before that they were never really uh, together. Um, until RPM came, and uh, and I, I obviously I understand you know because you know Power Rangers RPM is the Super Sentai counterpart to Go Onger, and you know basically they did have their gold and silver, so um, you know it was basically out of their control since they had to use utilize the suits and the Megazords of the season, um, you know and RPM is you know as far as a series, um, I, I think another series another reason why. Maybe the only um, the other reason why I, th I think that puts it down is that um, it was very non-canon. So RPM wasn't connected to the previous Power Rangers series, and um, you know, and they do allude to a couple places from previous Power Rangers series, like um, like there was like a little scene in one episode. I think it was a Ziggy focused episode where uh, he and his supervisor came off uh, or were exiting uh, Jungle Karma Pizza, which most ba most uh, people remember it as uh, RJ's um, place from Power Rangers Jungle Fury. So they kind of alluded to that. And they also alluded in one episode where they had like the red the red Space Ranger helmet from Power Rangers in space. So um, there were, I guess they kind of used that to kind of make it up for that. Um, oh, sorry, I thought it was someone there. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, even though the power, you know, Power Rangers RPM was, you know, non-canon to previous Power Rangers series, um, they were basically, you know, they were just trying to kind of make it up. Um, that's kind of what I'm trying to say here is, um, but you know, I think RPM being non-canon, I guess it had its reasons, but um, you know, it's quite unusual for an RPM series. Um, let's see, what can I think of? Um, the villains of the series, I already kind of discussed that the attack bots were the foot soldiers of the series. Um, Vengex, uh, the villain, the main, the general of the series. Um, this is, you know, Vengex is not related to the Vengex from Forever Red. Um, you know, it's not the Shadow Borg from Big Bad Beetle Borgs. No, no, no. Um, they're entirely different characters for those that are wondering. Um... You know, and Vengex was basically, like I said, the virus uh, that was kind of pretty much destroying a lot of the cities and turning into the wasteland, um, which kind of leads to a more, you know, post-apocalyptic tone. Um, and then you also have Tanaya. Um, damn. <laughs> she was hot. <laughs> I mean, um, I would say she's probably, like, the hottest villain since... Vipra, Power Rangers Lights Be Rescue, but um, I mean she's not she's no astronomer though. I mean unlike you know unlike uh, tonight you know Astronoma had um, you know conquered the world and not only the world but the entire galaxy and you know but you know Tanaya I mean I mean she was fine for what she was um, you know I mean it, you know just uh, she just talked very intelligently and you know that. You know, when Ziggy first stumbled into Tanaya, you know, she had a thing for her. And, um, and it turns out in later in the series that she is Dylan's sister. And, you know, this is around the time, um, by, by that time, uh, Eddie Gazillion stepped down as the writer and Judd Lynn pretty much took over. So they basically kind of recycled, uh, they recycled the whole storyline concept with Andros and Astronema from Power Engine Space. When uh, it turns out that you know Angel's sister Corone is actually Astronema, and they did someone like that with Dylan and Tanaya, but um, it, I mean it was pretty predictable in a way because in the start of the series, you know, you know Dylan was kind of you know saying that she that he was trying to look for her sister, but he keeps failing to do so, and um, and it turns out that you know he and uh, Tanaya were biologically related. Um, 
Now, originally, when Eddie Gazillion was uh, writing this, um, had he not left the series, um, there were actually plans for uh, Dylan to become the... or D Benjix would take over Dylan's body and become the Benjix uh, himself. And, um, and they were kind of teasing in a way because uh, there were some scenes or there was an episode or two where uh, Dylan was uh, taken over by the Benjix virus because there was like a uh, computer chip mount, um, that was implanted in him, and um, it was pretty basically had him, you know, basically had him sp going out of control and stuff. Um, and and eventually, towards the end of the series, the Vengex, the Vengex virus ended up spreading throughout the entire human population, and um, and you know the humans were basically getting controlled and. You know, microchipped in a way where they're doing all the all this violent stuff. Um, you know, it was just really it was carnage to describe it. Um, but you know, I mean, damn, I'm losing my train of thought here because I keep saying so much. Um, but you know, and also the other original plan was that Dylan and Tanaya weren't going to be related, so. Um, so they, even though they were teasing it, it wasn't supposed to happen. But then Eddie Gazillion kind of went over budget, and um, you know there wasn't really enough time to really plan out storylines and in, in long term wise, you know because just the schedule was really hectic and everything was moving fast. Um, there was an interview, at least according to Judd Lynn, that I read that kind of regards to the behind the scenes and how you know just how the way things were very flexible at the time you know just a very flexible schedule and um i'm also going to post the judd lynn interview down in the description box um you know i have you know the link to the interview article if for those that are interested so um there you have it that um and what else i want to say and i guess also i mean it was a pretty good season um overall for power Rangers rpm and um yeah, you know, I and the and I guess the two clip shows that they have were pretty unnecessary, but I guess they had their reasons. Um, you know, there was one clip show where uh, there was like a behind the scenes episode where you know Ziggy was kind of like being the narrator and taking us behind the scenes and stuff that goes on. They were talking about you know how things worked and you know the CGI, the fight scenes. Um, what else were they talking about? You know, just normal stuff. Um, but they don't, however, they don't break the fourth wall. And it sounds like a paradox in a way. Because, like, you're breaking the fourth wall, you're talking to the audience, but yet you're staying in character, you're staying as the characters that you're portraying, and you're not mentioning the actors' names. Um, kind of like, you know, kind of like, like, unlike Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, where they did, like, an episode where they were always where they went behind the scenes and they ended up um, acknowledging their real name, the ac actual actors' names that are portraying characters. So, um, like, they'll always say, like, Carlton Banks' actor name being, um, you know, just mentioning the actor's name, for instance. Um, I forgot his actual name, but um, that's not really important. Um, but you, you get where I'm going with. Um, so they don't mention the act the actors' names. They just only mention the actors that portray the characters' names. So um, so I mean it sounds kind of screwed up in a way, but um, but hopefully you understand why I'm going through this uh, or where I'm coming from. Uh, so that was basically that one the clip show, and uh, there was another clip show episode with uh, Benjix Wan. Where it was basically kind of like highlighting the events that unfolded throughout the series, and eventually leads up to the series finale, and um, you know I just always thought that was kind of a little unnecessary, or yeah, basically unnecessary in a way. But um, but I guess Power Rangers has to have clip shows, like pretty much almost a lot of uh, most Power Rangers seasons. Um, you know they tend to have clip shows, and. Um, I think it kind of started with Lost Galaxy when they started doing the clip show stuff, and it was that from that point forward where they started doing that. Um, yeah, I can't remember. 
Um, but I always thought it, the title name was a little misleading because I thought it would have been like some episode where they get uh, transported to another dimension where Benjax basically ruled the world and stuff. But um, but that didn't happen, or at least at least when I first uh, read the episode title, you know, I thought that was kind of like the direction they were going with, but it didn't happen that way. And um, and the whole alternate dimension thing wouldn't come in until the Power Rangers Samurai crossover, which would happen, you know, two years later. And um, but you know, the whole alternate dimension thing <laughs> does end up playing a factor, like. Um, after Power Rangers RPM, um, and then eventually you know get to the finale, and um, you know every you know almost everyone's getting uh, brainwashed by the by the Vengex virus, and um, Gem and Gemma initially died at first, but then they got then they were you know, then they got revived in part two of Danger and Destiny, and. Um, and then once Vengex collapsed, you know, once Ven the um, once Vengex got destroyed, um, you know, they all the Rangers had to get had to be relieved from their duty, and um, you know, and you know, and Dylan, Summer, and Tanaya were kind of going on an adventure and exploring the world, and um, and there was also a little bit at the ending where. Uh, where there was like like a red glow glow morpher i can't i don't know how <laughs> i could explain better um yeah there was something glowing in scott's morpher that's basically what i'm trying to say um shouldn't be that hard for me to say as it is but um but yeah and that's pretty much how it ended um so like i said power rangers rpm really enjoyable season um yes it does have its flaws however but I think despite that, it was enough for me to really tolerate in a series that I could really watch over and over again. Um, and there was a lot of bromance in this season, by the way. So, um, you know, I guess because, you know, this was also the first series that even though that there are five Rangers, you know, to start off with the series, um, you know, there was like only one girl in the series in the, as part of the five core Rangers. And I'm not counting Gemma, who was the extra ranger, but um, but to start off as four guys and one girl was something we didn't see in Power Rangers before, even though Super Sentai has done it before. But um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not I'm, I'm not trying to sound sex in the way, but um, but you know, the, bromance did play a big part in this series, and uh, you know, Dylan, Ziggy, and Scott were always you know seem to be goody goods well not goody goods but you know they're always like getting along with one or the other and you know they're just fighting for each other's as far as their friendships concerned um but you know just i don't know there's a lot of bromance going on this season that kind of kind of takes it a little too far but um but you know this is a kid show but uh you know and the acting was also pretty good so i mean a lot of the actors that uh a lot of actors were kind of already acting even before Power Rangers RPM, so I think that was also probably one of the reasons why I think the acting didn't feel cheesy and forced or just too too cartoonish in a way. But um, you know, they you know, they they still uh, retain the cheesiness um, after the first episode. But um, but Power Rangers RPM overall was a really enjoyable season for me, and um, you know it's. <laughs> you know, it's basically uh, it for my Power Rangers RPM review. So let me know what you all think of this series. What did you like? What did you not like about the season? And um, yeah, till next time, this is the Gold Standard Series 924 signing out.